Hello, fellow networkers. So, I'm recording this today because I had a request to give a more detailed look at configuring VPLS. Um, VPLS, Virtual Private LAN Services, is a Layer 2 VPN built on top of a provider's MPLS infrastructure. So I have a little diagram here. I have my P router, PE1, PE2, PE3. Inside of this gray cloud, uh, this is all MPLS traffic. So we're, we're doing label switching between the PE and the P router. And then what we're going to do for our CEs is we're going to tunnel through with a Layer 2 VPN so that all three CE routers think that they're on the same LAN segment for their WAN interfaces. Um, so I wanted to go through and show how to configure this. One caveat that I'll note, and I, I don't know if I brought this up in my uh, first VPLS video, but this isn't the production best practice way to configure VPLS. This is just a way to configure VPLS so that you can run it in a lab environment. Um, now what I mean by that is Cisco's best practice would be that you have VFI running on your PE routers um, and, as well as your P router that's aggregating all of your pseudo wires and switching this traffic. Um, the problem with that is um, it, that takes a lot of resources to run because 7200s and GNS3 or today I'll be using Cisco's viral product um, where I'm using these PE routers are iOS V routers. The, the problem is, is iOS V and 7200s alike don't support um, this manual signaled uh, L2 VFI that we need to configure. Therefore, uh, the only way that I've been able to set it up otherwise, the only way that I can duplicate a best practice configuration, I should say, excuse me, is to run multiple CSR 1000 Vs where I have a CSR as my P router as well as CSRs running for PE1, PE2, and PE3, and that takes a ton of RAM. I only have 16 gigs, which is a fair amount of RAM, but even the latest code in order to run a CSR 1000V requires 2.5 gigs of RAM, which, I mean, I know everyone's doing the math right now. I do have enough to run that. My system runs really slow once I start bringing the CEs in and uh, try to do a screen capture with this, and then I have my... Um, you know, files open and other things that I'm doing, so I can't afford to stop everything on my computer just to run this really quick lab. And even then, it's just so sluggish to run multiple CSRs um, just off of my desktop. So that's my reason that I configure it the way that I configure it, where I'm doing a point-to-point -point pseudo wire on my PE routers, target it to the L2 VFI on the P router. So. Anyway, enough explanation. The first thing I'm going to do, starting from the ground up, I don't have any routing protocols set up. Uh, I don't have MPLS configured, nothing. So this will probably be a little bit of a long video, um, depending upon how long it runs. I'm going to keep my eye on the clock. I might break it into a couple smaller parts just so you don't have to sit in front of your uh, your laptop or your desktop, hopefully laptop. I mean, if you're sitting on a desktop, watch this. My sympathies are to you. But... Um, so you don't have to watch this, you know, it, it could take 30 minutes to get it all set up. So I'll try and break it up if it starts to run that long. So here's the diagram, um, PE1, PE2, PE3. They all have point-to-point -point links back to this P router, which is my CSR 1000V that will be aggregating these pseudo wires. Addressing scheme is going to be 10.0xx. The, the X is represented on each of these links here. Um, for my point-to-point -point links. Loopbacks are going to be 10.hhh slash 32, where h is the router ID. Um, and you'll see that configured, just a quick explanation of what all those letters are on the screen. So I'm going to put this down here. I actually have all the IP addresses set up already because you don't have to see me configure that. So we'll run through, just make sure that they're all there. We'll do a show IP and brief, and we'll exclude unassigned addresses. All right, that's there. Actually, I think that's the wrong IP address. It should be 113, not 131. Hold on, I'm going to fix these guys. I think I did that on PE2 also. Let me pause it for a second. All right, and we're back. That should be fixed now. Here we go. So 10.0.113.3. 10.0.112.2, we have my loopback of 10.2.2.2, 10.0.111.1, and loopback of 10.111 on 
PE1, and then our P router, which is the CSR, running 13.3, has all of the respective interfaces, and gig 4 is still wrong. Hold on. I see what I did. Maybe 10, 0, 1, 12, 11. And we'll fix gig 4, 113. And now show IP and brief exclude on a sign should look right. So now that all of our IP addresses are there, we'll just do a really quick ping test to PE1. That looks good. To PE2. That looks good to PE3. All right. Now, again, I haven't started configuring anything with the CE routers, and we'll get to that in a second, but let's get MPLS running. In order to have MPLS running, we have to have a routing protocol first. I'm going to do a quick and easy OSPF configuration. So what we'll do for that, we'll go into Configure Terminal. We're going to do Router, OSPF. We'll give it Process ID 1. We'll say Network 10, 0. So anything that has the IP address has an IP address starting with 10 is going to be in area zero, and that'll catch our loopback and all of our interfaces. Let me figure that there. I'm actually going to throw an end in there. I can drop back down to privilege for these videos. There, 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 and we'll give it a second for OSPF to converge. To converge. SPF neighbors. All right, so we're forming neighborship. I'm going to pause there for a second to save some time. Awesome. Every second counts. So we have our OSPF neighborships all look like they're up. We'll do a show IP route OSPF. We have routes. We'll ping 10.1.1.1, which is the loopback of PE1 from the loopback of PE3. Hey, it all looks good. Okay, so now that that's there, we're going to configure... MPLS. So we're going to do MPLS IP, MPLS LDP, which will be our label, which is the label distribution protocol, but it is how we'll exchange labels in this lab. We're going to do router ID is loopback zero. And then on our PE routers, our MPLS interfaces are all going to be gig zero slash one. So we'll enable MPLS there. I'll pop that on our PEs. And then on the CSR, gig 2, 3, and 4 are our MPLS interfaces. And we'll see our MPLS neighborships come up, all formed between loopback interfaces. Uh, let's throw N to notepad there. Boom, boom. And of course, we can do a show MPLS forwarding table, and we'll see all of our labels. Looks good. All right, let me do a quick time check here. All right, only about 8 minutes and 30 seconds in, so we'll start the config. I might be able to get this done in 15. All right, so I'm going to bring up these pictures really quick one more time for our diagrams. So again, this will be the actual layout. We have MPLS running here in the cloud. And then CEs come in on gig 0 slash 2 of the PE routers, indicated by these nice red lines here. However, since this is a layer 2 VPN, the CEs are actually not remotely aware of any of this infrastructure uh, on the gray cloud. All the CEs see is something like this. They think that they're on a shared segment um, and their WAN interfaces, which is gig 0 slash 1, will all be 192.168.123.h, where h is the router ID. And the loopbacks will all be 192.168.1.h, where h is, again, the router ID. So I want to stress one more time, this is a transparent VPN. The CEs will have no knowledge of what the PE routers are or that there's even a PE device. They really just think they're, they're plugged into a giant switch. So before we turn the PEs, before, sorry, before we turn up the CEs, we'll go through and we'll configure all of our interfaces uh, with XConnect statements on the PEs to start encapsulating frames 
with an MPLS um, VC and then sending them up to the CSR and uh, we'll use the CSR as uh, an, as a as a bridge to aggregate all of these pseudo wires together. So let's get started. The CE configuration is actually pretty simple. We're going to go config T onto interface geek zero slash two, which I'll bring up Cisco viral real quick, and we'll make sure geek zero slash two goes to CE one. On PE2, let me bring that out so I can actually read it. PE2, gig 0 slash 2 goes to 0, 1 on CE2. And on gig 0 slash 2 on PE3 goes to 0 slash 1 on CE3. I think I read out I think I read those out loud right, but you can read on the screen in case I misspoke. Alright, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna no shut the interface. We'll do no CDP enable. And we're gonna say X connect to 10, 11, 11, 11. So we're gonna make sure that is the loopback interface on our P router. We'll say in cap is MPLS with a VC, actually I think it's the VC IDs first. One, two, three, then in cap MPLS. Let's make sure my syntax is right. We'll drop that on PE1 first. All right. Looks like it was good. We're going to do the same on PE2. And on PE3. So I haven't configured the P router yet, so these... Um, Layer two pseudo wires are going to show down. You can do a show MPLS L2 transports VC, and you'll see that they show down. Uh, at this point, if your pseudo wire shows down and you're 100% confident that the config is up and running on your P router, you want to check your MPLS forwarding table to make sure that you have a label uh, 210 11 11 11. So you can do show MPLS forwarding table. And you can see that we do have a, uh, a local label and a pop label operation, which is good. This is fine. Um, this is what you want to see if you're directly connected to your P router. If you're not directly connected to your P router, you'll actually see an outgoing label too. So this is an example of a good looking MPLS forwarding table. We have local labels and we either have an outgoing label or a pop label uh, to all of our known prefixes. You'll see if you saw a no label going towards your P router, you'd have a problem. Um, right now, you see no label for um, this L2 circuit because the circuit's actually down. When the circuit shows up, we'll actually have an outgoing label or a pop label operation. Actually, I think it's, I'm also 100% positive it'll be an outgoing label because it's like a double label stack sort of deal. So let's go over to the P router and see if we can configure our L2 VFI. And full disclosure here, it's been a while since I set up an L2 VFI. Um, and I'm kind of doing this in a rush, so I didn't have a chance to do a test run before recording. So you're going to see me iOS help my way through this. So L2 VFI, I think we have to give it a name. We'll call it VPLS Video. And then we're going to say that it's manual. We'll give it a VPN ID of 123, which is the VC value given to all of the PEs. We'll scroll up right there. Oh, it's right there too. And press enter. We have to put it into a bridge domain. Again, bridge domain, this is going to be an arbitrary number. Um, didn't have to match one, two, three, but we'll give it a matching bridge domain ID also. And then we have to do our neighbors. We'll say 10, 1, 1, 1, which is PE1 encapsulation and PLS. We'll do no split horizon because again, we're not building this to another VFI so we can't do this the Cisco best practice way. We're going to build, uh, make a neighborship with PE2 and PE3. We'll do a show MPLS, MPLS, L2 transports, VC. So all of our VCs show that they're up here. All right, so really quick on PE3, we saw earlier that 
our MPLS forwarding table showed that our outgoing interface scroll up our outgoing interface for this L2 circuit uh, was set to drop because that's because our L2 circuit was down now that it's up let's take a look at our forwarding table again and you can see outgoing interface is gig 02 shows next hop point to point and one more time you can see that our MPLS L2 transport for VC123 is showing up so I'm going to do a quick time check again and if there's enough time I'll just quickly set up the CEs and we'll see them talk as though they're on a giant switch. Alright, so this will probably take just a couple of minutes. It might run towards the 20 minute mark, which is a little bit longer than what I want it to do. Um, so what I'll do now, I'm going to just pop back in to Viral. I'm going to launch a console to our CE devices. I have to do it one at a time. You can actually highlight all three of them and just click taunt the console, but if you do it one at a time, that kind of ensures that they'll open up in the order that you want. Otherwise, it looks like it can be arbitrary sometimes. Like CE2 might have opened first and CE1, and it's just a matter of preference. So you can see there's no config on these whatsoever. So I'm going to pause the video really quick while I slap some IP addresses on there and host names, and we'll come right back. All right, we're back. IP addresses have been assigned, as you can see on the screen. So I'll try and ping from CE1. I'm going to try and ping CE2 and CE3. You'll notice that they, again, appear as though they're directly connected by um, a layer 2 switch. So we'll ping 192.168.123.2. All right, got replies. We'll try and ping .3. All right, got replies. We can show IP ARP. We have an ARP entry for 192.168.123.1, which is the gig 01 interface of CE1. So again, VCEs have no idea they're going through this entire provider network. Um, their traffic pattern is actually going like CE1 went through PE1 up to this P router down to PE2 and then it got to hit PE or sorry then it got to hit CE2's gig 0 slash 1 interface though it has no idea that traffic's there whatsoever as far as it's concerned it's connected to a layer 2 switch I know that I keep saying that I just can't stress it enough um, now what we're going to do we'll just throw a quick uh, config on there for EIGRP just so you can see that they can talk and route between one another. Um, again, completely um, unaware that they're going through an MPLS network to get to one another. So say router EIGRP, we'll put it in named mode, let's call it VPLS, address family IPv4, unicast, dynamo system 100, and network 192, 168, Zero 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 two five five two five five. So saying any interface starting with one nine two one six eight will participate in EIGRP, and then we'll end. So we'll do that there, 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 and we have EIGRP neighborships in full mesh. To show IP EIGRP neighbors. I'm going to do a show IP route EIGRP. And I'll trace to the loopback of CE3. Boom, look at that. Connects directly to CE3. Again, completely unaware that it's going through an MPLS network. Just thinks it's directly connected by a transparent bridge. So that was a little more detailed view of configuring VPLS. Uh, I hope this clears up any confusion about a layer 2 VPN. Um, and, I mean, the good thing about this lab is you could really reuse it to configure a Layer 3 MPLS VPN if you wanted to. Um, and maybe I'll do that in a future video. So until then, thanks for watching, guys, and um, hopefully this was informative.